Hello, and welcome to another episode of The Profit Builder. I'm Vicki Suter, your host, and I am super excited about today's episode. My guest today, Ed Earl with Contractors Staffing Sources, is going to be talking with us about the six hiring myths that hold contractors back from success. And we all know that contractors really are struggling with finding good help these days. And and hiring and hiring well is really one of the big topics on everybody's mind. And so I was very happy when Ed agreed to be a guest on the blog because I think what he has to share is going to be hugely valuable. So welcome, Ed. Thanks so much for being here. Thanks, Vicki. I'm, I'm happy to be here. Thanks for inviting me. Yeah. So, um, and for, for uh, just to give you guys a little bit of background, I've known Ed for several years. We're in a mastermind group together and uh, I, I've just learned so much from him over the years. And I really respect and appreciate his background and his experience. And I love that he's um, going to be talking about this topic today because uh, I think that he really has a lot to contribute to you as a contractor to really help you in your hiring and being able to be better at hiring. But before, like Ed, before you jump in and, and start talking about what those six hiring myths are, will you just tell people a little bit about yourself and a little bit about, about your background and um, how did you come to be doing this body of work? Sure. Yeah. So uh, I'm the Chief Operating Officer for Contractor Staffing Source. Uh, which is a, a nationwide uh, consulting company that works in the recruiting field. We specialize in working exclusively with uh, the residential construction industry. And um, we have a, a, a variety of methods that we use for uh, identifying, screening, and, and finding candidates for various construction positions. Uh, we currently work with close to 70 contractors nationwide, uh, we've got a staff of about 18 employees that I manage, and we've seen a tremendous amount of growth here in the last uh, couple of years um, as a result of the growth in, in the residential construction industry. So um, I've been in construction for about 30 years, as you know, Vicki. Uh, I'm here in San Diego where I've run a, a project management company as an owner's rep. So I'm hired by homeowners that are building custom homes, and I manage that process. And, um, and then I um, got involved with Paul Sandeman, who is our founder of Contractor Staffing Source about seven or eight years ago. And, um, and um, now I, I run the operations for that company. So yeah, I'm really excited to be here because you are exactly right, Vicki. Uh, recruiting challenges right now, it is so difficult to find talented people in the construction industry. And, yeah. um, and that's, uh, we've learned a lot in, in doing that for as many clients as we have for as long as we have. And, and I want to share today some of the, the, the ideas that, um, that, that we've, we've learned. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, uh, I'm excited. Let's jump in. So, Ed, you got six myths. Tell me the number right. one myth. Like, what do you think? Right. That? So the number one, the, well, the, no, the number one myth is that, you know, you should only recruit when you need someone. Which, you know, at one level makes sense. I mean, why would you recruit for someone if you don't need anyone? But our philosophy is that recruiting is an ongoing process. It's something that you need to be doing continuously. Any successful construction company, just like they never stop marketing, they should never stop recruiting. Yeah. And I... Um, I no, I was just going to say, I love that analogy because I say that to people all the time, like that whole thing of you, like if you want to keep the pipeline full, you're always marketing when you're busy so that it doesn't, you know, you don't have the roller coaster of revenue. And that is so true about employees. So I love that you said that. Right. right. Yeah. Just like, I mean, if you wait until your, your, your pipeline drops to start marketing, it's too late. And it's the same thing with recruiting. If you wait until your star project manager leaves, uh, it's, it's too late, you know. And uh, I like to use the analogy of like a sports team, you know, in a sports team there, you don't just have your star quarterback. You've got your first string, your second string, your third string players, because you never know when your first string one gets, gets hurt and you need to have someone to, to step in. And, um, you know, I, 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 we were talking before we started, Vicki, I was, I was t telling my definition of the worst employee. And my definition of the worst employee is someone that's, that's um, not bad enough to, to fire, but they're not good enough to keep. 
And yet you keep them on because of that situation that you don't have someone else to replace them. You're, you're afraid that you can't find someone else. And so you tolerate their, their, their mediocre performance because you aren't out there always actively recruiting. Yeah. Yeah. And that's just, that's the worst, right? Cause then it just like, it starts to affect everything in your business. It starts to affect the morale. It starts to affect the productivity of everybody around that person. It starts to affect the profitability of your projects. It starts to affect your reputation as a business, your ability to get future work, all of those things. Yeah. And I just right. want to say, you know, the most successful contractors that I work with are constantly recruiting for and looking for people. And that's been the case, you know, well before the pandemic and well before, you know, this, the shortage has been in place for a long time for this industry. And we're just feeling really the depths of it right now as there's such a demand for quality employees. So, yeah. Right. All right. What's yeah. the next one? Yeah. All right. So the number next, two yeah. is that employees, employees are expensive. Uh, you know, I've been told by so many contractors, you know, I, I just try to hire the least amount of people as possible, you know, because I want to keep my overhead low. And, you know, the more employees I have, the more I have to work and to cover that all that overhead. And um, I guess at one, you know, one one level, again, that that can seem true. But the reality really is the reverse of that. And it's not that employees are expensive, but employees should be making you money. I mean, that's how you make money as a construction company is with your employees. And so, you know, the, the more employees that you have, the less you should be working and the more profitable your, your, your business should be. So that's uh, another excuse that we hear why people are not, not always looking to, to hire people. Well, and the other thing too is that, you know, people trying to, I've seen people do this too, Ed, where they'll hire somebody, but they'll try to find the cheapest person. And that's so short sighted in thinking, right? Because the truth is you find somebody who has a more experience who you are going to pay more money. They're going to make you, as you say, more money. Right. It's really interesting. I, again, I'll say some of the most successful contractors I work with pay their people really, really well. And then they demand really high results from them, but they also are dealing with people who are willing to step up to that challenge and who have that expertise and that experience. So um, you know, and in the long run, those projects end up getting finished on time on budget, right? So, uh, right. Exactly. all right, yeah. what's number three? The so number three is, um, oh, we can do the recruiting ourselves. And, um, you know, it's the recruiting process. I can tell you what we do at Contractor Staffing Source. It's a seven step process. You know, it starts with writing a job ad that's going to be compelling to attract the right kind of candidates. And it ends with, uh, with a pretty extensive um, assessment that we do um, once there's part of, part of the hiring process. Um, the whole entire hiring process is a very sophisticated and complex process. And it's not just something that you can do yourself. You know, sometimes the, the contractors will say, oh, you know, I'll have my front office girl. She can just, you know, run a couple of ads in Indeed and Indeed. And we'll get some candidates and, you know, and we'll interview them and that's it. But it's, uh, it is, is not that simple. No. And it's so much more complex these days because it's like the traditional places don't really work uh, the traditional ways of, well, really old school placing an ad, right? But like Craigslist or Monster, like it really requires thinking outside the box about how you search for people. And it requires more, as you say, more sophistication. And that, um, and I know you're going to talk more about this and what your process is and that seven step process, Ed, but I, um, I really appreciate that, especially with as busy as people are today, that finding somebody to help you do your recruiting can really leverage your time in such a useful way. And what I also like about what contractors staffing sources does is that you approach it from a different perspective than a traditional headhunter. And you specialize specifically in the construction industry. Um, so I, uh, I, I think that it's important that when somebody's going to go look for someone that you find a, a recruiter who understands your industry and has those connections in the industry, but also has that sophistication to be able to know how to tap into those resources. Right. Yeah. 
because you know, Vicky, it's it's an employees market right now. You know, there's there's Absolutely. there's way fewer employees out there than there are jobs available, and so you know, employees really have the you know the pick of of the market. And if you don't get back to a top candidate right away, they're gone. Within 24 or 48 hours, they found another opportunity. And so, you know, that's another thing that, that people, if they just post a, a job ad on Indeed and they check it once, once a week, you know, we're, we have our, our team is every day, several times a day, they're going through and reviewing the applicants and screening them and finding the good ones. And, and the ones that are really exceptional, we get to our client immediately so that they can contact them and engage them because if they don't, um, it, you know, it, it goes away. And, you know, the other thing too, that I tell contractors about this, you know, we can do it ourselves mentality. It's so contrary to how a contractor approaches a project, right? I mean, any good contractor knows, what do you do? You hire the best subs you can to go put your project together. You don't go to try to wire the house yourself, right? You hire the best electrician and that person does it. So it's, you know, when I, I explain that to him, I say, so why do you think, you know, you have good subs? Oh, we've got great subs. Well, then why do you think, why wouldn't you do the same thing with your recruiting? I mean, you, you know the value of hiring an expert to do your, your construction work. Why wouldn't you do the same thing when it comes to your recruiting? Yeah, good point. Yeah, good point. Yeah. All right, what's number four? All right, number four is that you have to recruit someone that has construction experience and they need to be from the construction industry. And um, we have found that that is definitely not the case, especially in the last you know, year and a half since the pandemic has hit. We have found a lot of great people that um, have no construction experience um, or without, you know, from outside the construction industry. And um, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's something where you really, and I, I know that you, you believe this as well, Vicki, that, you know, you, you can teach the skills. What you can't teach is the character and the aptitude and the ability, right, of those candidates. That's what they inherently have to have. But as far as their, their actual skills that they need, that part can be taught. Um, a great example that we found, so what, what's happened in the pandemic is a couple of things, right? People have been impacted in industries. Fortunately for the construction industry, our industry has boomed since the beginning, right? We were designated as an essential industry and residential construction not only got to continue, but, but really flourished. Other industries like hospitality and, and leisure and travel have really been hit and have not come back. And so, um, you know, many people in those industries have started seeing the writing on the wall and they're like, hey, I want to get out of this, this industry. And we have one example, we have a, a client in North Carolina that was looking for a selections coordinator. And uh, so we wrote the, the job ad in such a way that we put no construction experience uh, required and we found a wedding planner. So mm -hmm. this is a woman that hadn't planned a wedding in over a year because of the pandemic. She, yeah. she wanted to get out of the industry. But if you think about what she was doing, her experience was in working with couples and Vicki, I know you just went through this and you can personally know from your son, right? You're working with a couple of wedding couples, planners, working with this couple, they're stressed, it's their big day, you know, what flavor take are they gonna get? What color tablecloth? And you know, what band are they gonna pick? Where are they gonna have the wedding? And so she went from that to working with stressed couples that are worried about, you know, what color backsplash are we gonna have for the tile in our bathroom or what, what type of countertop in our kitchen? And it was a seamless transition. Brilliant. Again, she knew nothing about construction, but she had that skill set of helping, you know, uh, uh, emotional couples to make really important selections in their in their life. And so yeah. that was a, a perfect, perfect title. Yeah, that's a great example. The other position that I think about, Ed, when you talk about that ability to make that transition is project managers. Um, because if you have, you know, if, if you do not require your project managers to know how to do construction, but you really truly want them to focus on time and on budget as promised, that training, and it's so interesting, um, cause I've talked to a lot of other project managers in other industries and that training and that fundamental skill set is one that is absolutely transferable. If that's really what the focus of that job is, um, in a construction right. company. Uh, you know, sometimes yeah. people 
project managers, they're actually field people who are belts on, but a true project manager, that absolutely translates really well, that same skill set. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, that totally yeah, makes another, Yeah, another, yeah, we've had event, event planners. So we'll hire event planners as project managers, because if you think about it, you know, what an event planner is doing is, is very similar, you know. But with the, the, you know, the way events have been impacted and still are, there's a lot of, you know, unemployed wow. event planners out there that are looking to make a change. Yeah. So. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. The other thing we found, yeah. And the other thing we found too, um, not, you know, directly related to this, but, but is somewhat it is, is that we're finding people that are wanting to relocate, right? People that are looking to move. That's the other thing that the pandemic has done. It's uh caused many of us to, to reconsider what careers we're in, but also where we want to live. And so we have been very successful when we're looking for candidates. We oftentimes will identify other areas outside of that, that market where we can advertise for that position and get people that are interested in, in wanting to relocate. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah, that totally makes sense. Totally. Yeah. All right. What's number five, Ed? Five of so your number, yeah. So number five is uh, that you should hire fast and fire slow. And the, uh, the the truth is the right way to do it is the exact opposite, right? You should you should hire slow and fire fast. Um, but unfortunately, that's not what um, what many many employers do. And again, it goes back to what I was saying earlier, that in this kind of a market where it's an employee's market, if you aren't always out there actively um, recruiting, then you're going to tolerate that worst employee, you know, that, that, that person that really isn't, isn't bad enough to fire, but they're not good enough to keep. But yet you keep them on because of that. And um, so, you know, you're, you're firing slow instead of firing fast. And you know, Vicki, I'm sure you would agree that that can bring down the morale of the entire company, right? Well, you absolutely. have that kind of, you know, less than optimal person that, that, you know, continues to be employed by the company and the rest of the superstars go, you know, why am I busting my butt when this guy's over there, you know, doing a, a halfway job and, and he's still, still getting his paycheck too. Yeah. Well, in the, in the, it costs a fortune it costs so much money to hire the wrong person because you've invested right. time and energy and money. And, you know, especially if you've hired and you have used a service that you haven't hired well for in the first place, you're paying a lot of money. They say on average, it's 25 to 30% of somebody's annual salary in this industry to um, when somebody turns over to hire the wrong person. And invariably, when I start to talk with people about like, why did that new person not work out? It's because they didn't do enough. They didn't have a very good screening process at the front end. They took the first person who had, you know, who could fog a mirror, <laughs> so to speak. Um, they didn't have a very good set of practices around how they interviewed. They didn't ask good interview questions um, or they didn't, you know, they basically talked about the company. They didn't really interview the person. I mean, there's just so many things that I see that, contribute at the front end to a bad hire at the back end. And but um, I'll go back to your analogy about projects. So too, Ed, because as a contractor, when you think about it, um, projects that go the best are the ones that have the most planning and forethought at the front end. Those jobs run right. at the back end, right? Like investing that time at the front end always produces a job that runs more smoothly, is more likely to be on budget, on time, as promised, as opposed to, you know, if you just kind of like go, all right, we got a, you know, we got a blueprint, we're slamming off, like you would never, or you would just never show up at a job without a plan. The same thing is true when we're hiring people. So, yeah. Yeah. This is a great book. I don't know if you can see it on the camera yeah, there, but close. it's food, move right? Back. Move back. So move back a little bit. Oh, there we go. Who? All right. So it's a, um, it's a so staffing start, book. It's okay. by Jeff Smart. And, 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 excuse start, me. Over, start over again about the great book and don't get it so okay. close. We'll put it back here. Okay. All right. So this is a great book, Vicki, that, uh, that I would recommend to, to anyone. It's called Who? 
H O H W H O. It's by Jeff Smart and Randy Street. And in there, they actually talk about what you were just saying. They said, according to studies we've done with our clients, the average hiring mistake costs 15 times an employee's base salary in hard costs and productivity loss. Think about it, a single hiring blunder on a $100,000 employee can cost a company $1.5 million or more. So yeah. that, that is the, the argument right there why you should hire slow and, and fire fast. Yeah, um, great, good one. All right, what is yeah. myth number six about hiring? So number six is really kind of, it, it ties into to the first one about that you should always be recruiting. And, um, and the myth is that hiring, uh, that you should approach hiring like a project, which means that it has, you know, it had, had comes to an end at some point. And the fact of the matter is that you, you never are done with your recruiting project. Recruiting is not a project, it's a process, right? And, um, and, and but I think that helps, can help with a contractor to understand that because a contractor is so project oriented, right? Because that's what they do all day long. They're building projects and every project has a beginning, a middle and an end. And at some point it comes to an end. And so I think it's that project mindset that sometimes prevents contractors from really understanding that recruiting is an ongoing process. It is not a project that, that comes to an end at some point. Right, good. All right, so very quickly, Ed, just give us a recap of the six hiring myths, if you would, one more time for people. Sure. And then um, and then I wanna talk about this free resource that you have to share with people. That right. want to sure, I think rather than, than saying the myths, let's kind of say what the realities are as opposed to the, to the myths. So the first reality is that you should always be recruiting, right? Yeah. yeah, so the, the first reality is that you should always be recruiting. The second reality is that employees are a worthy investment and that they actually make you money. They don't cost you money. The third reality is that you should outsource your recruiting to a professional expert that knows how to do recruiting. The fourth reality is that you can find some really exceptional talent outside of the construction industry and that um, construction experience is not, should not always be a requirement for, for your positions in finding good candidates. So the fifth reality is hire slow and fire fast, right? Take your time with hiring, go through all the process, make sure you've really fully assess that person, check their references, had multiple interviews with them, really take your time in, in, in hiring. And then fire fast. Don't put up with that worst employee that I talked about. If they're not working out, let them go. You know, we recommend that you start with a probationary period with your employee and really evaluate them that during that time. If you see red flags or performance issues, address them immediately. And if it doesn't work, you know, fire them quickly. Don't don't let them hang hang on. So, and then the the last reality is that you know, unlike a project, recruiting is a process, and it is an ongoing process that never comes to an end. So. Awesome. That's a nice way of kind of bringing it to the other side of it, right? What are the set of practices and the right. set of thinking around hiring and recruiting that you want to have in order to be successful? Um, in, in having, in building great teams, right? Yeah. Right. All right. So Ed, um, thank you for this. I think this has been super helpful and informative. And I know that you have a free assessment. Can you just talk with people, um, tell them a little bit about that? Give us that um, link. Actually, I'm going to put, you don't have to repeat the link. I'm going to put it here. It's down there at the bottom of the video. Um, I'll share that link with you. It'll also be in the show notes so that you can click on it and go get your free assessment. And then also, would you just tell people um, a little bit more about uh, your services, how they work and how people can get a hold of you? Sure, sure, happy to do that. So, um, you know, the assessment is the key part of our hiring process and should be of any hiring process. We really recommend that whether you use us or anyone that you should use an assessment. And there's lots of assessments out there, right? There's the DISC and Myers-Briggs and, 
and strength finders, and there's a lot of different ones that you can find online. We have a proprietary assessment that um, is specifically designed to evaluate uh, candidates in the construction industry. And um, it's a test that you take online. It takes about 45 minutes. I know, Vicki, you have, have done it before. And, uh, you know, sometimes it'll ask you the same question in more than one way because it wants to make sure that it's assessing you correctly. And then it actually assesses based on the position you're applying for. So the assessment is evaluated differently if you're applying to be an office manager versus a superintendent versus a, a director of construction. So um, and we encourage our employers to take that assessment test as well, because it really gives you a good idea then of how the assessment test works and um, and, and and how it can really help evaluate your your top candidates. So um, for those of you. Let me just ask a question about that. Ed. So um, the assessment is actually uh, the tool. You, so you do assessments on candidates when you're recruiting before you send that candidate to an, a an employer as a, as a prospective employee. Um, are Correct. you saying that this free assessment that you're giving us the link to down there, that that would allow uh, somebody who's watching this video to go in and do that assessment for themselves based on whatever their position is, whether they're a business owner, project manager, estimator, whatever, and be right. able to then get a report that would show them the kind of report they would get when they used this assessment tool in recruiting. Yes, right. you're exact, exactly right, Vicki. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right, cool. So, um, and the assessment is really just part of our process. If I you know, can, can give you a little bit more of a detail. So, as I said before, it really starts with creating the right kind of job description, which I know, Vicki, you've, you've talked quite a bit about. And you've got some really great advice on how to write the kind of job description that's going to engage and attract the right kind of candidate. But then you have to know where to actually post that, that job posting. And we use over 20 different job boards um, and we selectively use them based on the type of the, the, the market that we're in, the geographic market that we're in, and the type of position that we're hiring for. Um, and sometimes we might boost the positions if they're on Indeed or ZipRecruiter and we have relationships with all of them and, and working with that. So that's the next thing is to know where to post them on the job boards. And then the, the next step after that is actually receiving the candidates and evaluating them. And so we have something called an ATS, an applicant tracking system that actually can track our applicants as they're submitting their, their resumes. We're tracking them through the system. And we have an initial ranking period that we'll do. We'll review their resume, see if they meet the basic requirements. If they do, then we'll do an initial screening call um, to get some more background on them. And then if they pass the screening call, then we'll do the assessment. And then if they pass the assessment, then we'll set them up for an interview with our client. And then if they then pass those series of interviews, then we'll do a background check. So it's a whole process through uh, of this. So, so and, um, and the pricing. That's very thorough. And what I like about it is that you're, you're really doing a deep dive to really determine on your end um, that when you serve up a candidate, it's the right candidate. And that, as you say, I love the assessment tool because it is a very cool, unique thing that you guys do that really determines whether or not somebody has the right personality and, um, and really sort of fundamental way of thinking that's going to be appropriate for that particular position. Uh, because sometimes people end up with titles where they don't really have the right, you know, it's just not a right fit for who they are. So I like that the assessment kind of weeds those wrong or they, those unqualified or candidates out. And, um, and it's, I think it's really cool that you guys do background checks too. I always say to people, I think that's super important um, because people can tell you anything. They can put anything on a piece of paper, but doing a background check or doing a reference check is hugely important as part of the whole recruiting and hiring process. That's cool. Right. Yeah. So and then you, the last thing I wanted to just... Go ahead. Yeah, sorry. So the last thing I wanted to say was just, you know, even our pricing of how we price our services is different than how most recruiters work. You know, most recruiters 
work on a fee based basis where they're charging, you know, maybe uh, 20% of their annual salary or the first two months salary or something like that. And um, we didn't want to price it that way, but again, because we want our clients to really see this as an ongoing process, right? And so instead of pricing it on a per candidate or fee-based basis, we charge uh, a monthly fee. And the monthly fee is, uh, depends on, you know, the number of candidates that they're looking for and the number of markets and all of that. We have anywhere from $2,000 to $6,000 a month. Um, and, um, but it's based on, you know, the number of candidates that they have. And then we even have a maintenance mode. So once they actually make their hire, we recommend that they then move to a maintenance mode, which is a much lower cost monthly fee. But what that does is that continues with the candidate flow, right? They've already built that pipeline, if you will. They they sent the job postings out and they have the candidates. Because again, you really don't know when you hire someone, you know, we when someone hires someone and they tell us, oh, you know, we've hired someone, you can turn it off. And we say, no, 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 don't do that. I mean, we've done everything we can. We've done the assessments and the background checks and the interviews, and but you really won't know if this person is going to work out for you know, several weeks or a month or two. So don't shut everything down right away. Let's move it into maintenance mode. We'll continue to 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 get uh, resumes and and uh, and be able to to do that. And even for for clients that are not actively looking for candidates right now, they can they can use this maintenance mode to just start to engage in the market. You know, something that we always tell our clients too is that you should always be interviewing, even if you don't have a position available. Yeah, so people can go on a maintenance mode with you, even if that, like in that whole looking and start recruiting, even if you don't have an open position, but it starts to get them candidates filtered into them in a way that they can be prepared if they're looking to grow or like they have a new project coming up and it's not today, but it's maybe six months from now or three months from now, getting people into the pipeline, doing that maintenance mode is a way to do that, yeah? Right. Yeah, and sometimes, you know, they may, in, in doing that, find this superstar that's just so good that they say, look, you know what, I didn't, well, I didn't think I was in the market, but this person is so good, I'm not going to let them go. I'm going to hire them. I know that they're going to, you know, make a huge difference in our, our company. I'm going to hire them and we'll find a place for them. And that sometimes happens as well. Nice, nice. Love it. Um, Ed, how can, so um, I know I, I put the link down there for the free assessment, but if somebody right. just wants to call you up and have a conversation about your services, what's the best way to do Sure. It? Yeah. So um, I'll go ahead and give your listeners my, my personal cell phone number, which is 858-232-3677. Awesome. And um, also you can go to contractorstaffingsource.com. And uh, you can uh, you can learn more about our, our seven step uh, recruiting process and how it all works together and a little bit more about the background of our company and, and how we work. And we're actually a, a, a Hawaii based company. And uh, so we, we try to bring a little of that aloha spirit to our interactions with our clients as well. So nice. And there you go. Ed's Hawaiian shirt, my palm trees. Yeah, I've there. got my Hawaiian shirt on, right? <laughs> All right. Well, Ed, thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for sharing your expertise with our watchers and listeners today. And uh, for all you contractors out there who are looking to build great teams, who are wanting to um, stop this whole struggle with finding good people, I highly encourage you to go ahead and check out the free assessment. It doesn't cost you anything. Go find out some more information, get a hold of Ed and um, start getting some great candidates to start flowing into you because that's gonna be your key to being able to grow a sustainably successful contracting business. Thank you again, Ed. Thanks for everybody who's listening and watching today and we'll see you next time on The Profit Builder. Thanks, Vicki.